Uh, welcome, YouTubers. Uh, I don't know if anybody's interested in any of this stuff, but anyways, I'll talk quickly about this fence that I'm building. Um, so, let's take a look. This is probably late in the game to talk about all this stuff since most of it's already, well, it's not done. It's a country mile away from being done. Um, but there's the posts. And uh, they should all just disappear. Now, how did I get this laid out? Uh, first, I started off with uh, some batter boards, if you will, and just sort of like, yeah, there they are. Uh, just sort of put these at where I thought the corners would be. So, like in this case here, there would be two, because this is a corner post. One pointing the way the strings run in here. You can see the pink string. And then there was another one running this long way where there was another string and then you can see way off in the distance there there's a power pole and there's another set of fence that runs that way and so there's a corner post over there and so I had string lines laid out on all three sections that I'm putting together here and so you're going to have a whole bunch of background noise because the vehicle's driving by so Anyway, so I had the three string lines laid out, and then, uh, and then what I do? I took a, a four by four or whatever, a two by four a, a, that I wanted to have for pole spacing to be consistent, and I walked around, and the string line was pretty close to the ground, and I just sort of lined up the post or the two by four, four by four, whatever it was. And um, that was nine feet long in this case. And I uh, went around with a paint marker or uh, ground marking paint and marked out the centers of all the posts, lining it up with the string line. And then and I took the string line back down and then I had all these sort of crosshairs marked on the ground, pink crosshairs or orange or whatever the color they were. And then I went back and I had rented an auger, but they only had um, 12 inch augers available. And these are six by six posts. So I was hoping to get 18 inch holes dug, but anyways, I got 12 inch holes dug. And the ground is like friggin' rock hard here. It's like you get through maybe three or four inches of it with the auger and then you're dealing with rocks and heavy clay and so most of it was hand digging and then some parts I even rented a jackhammer uh, along this part that you can see here along this part of the fence and uh, I don't want to make this video too long and rambly uh, but anyways you got all the holes dug and then we put all the posts in put the string lines back up uh, well, I went and put the corners up. So like here you can see there's a corner up here and that one's in. That was one of the first ones. And then there was one other corner that went all the way to the very far end over there. And so once I had the two corners up, um, that's when those were, ha I was happy with those and the other line running that way in this instance. Um, then I went in, uh, secured those posts. And what I'm doing here, I'll show you in a minute. Um, you know, I'd, I bought this these posts from uh, a guy down island. I'm here on Vancouver Island. And um, I ended up buying these ACZA treated posts. So, sort of... What I was led to understand is that these are really uh, deep treated for marine application even uh, treated posts that are or treated timbers in essence they're used for building docks and stuff like that 
because I really, really hope not to rebuild this fence. Anyways, so, um, well, we're over five minutes here already. I'll try to cut it short. Anyways, so, once the corners are up, one corner, one corner, put a string line up between them and get all the lines, the posts to line up so that they're just, so that they're flush. This one's not in yet. So that the face is flush. I don't know if I can see that. I'm looking right in the sun here. So maybe the other way is better. So that the face is flush. In this case here, like I say, this one's not done yet. It needs to be out a little tiny bit further. And that's the other thing to keep in mind is that wind does affect these string lines in um, the case of uh, what I've got going on here because they're really long runs. Like we're about 250 feet along the front, hey? Um, maybe even a little bit longer than that. And uh, I got 400, I got 500 feet in total. Anyways, so you line up the front so that the front face is just tickety-boo touching so that they're all perfectly in line. And then what I'm doing, to try to cut this short, is um, get them level. So I don't know if I can show you. So they're level. Reasonably level. And I got myself a couple of stay posts, uh, stay poles. And this one I just finished here. And then I made up these, um, it's like a really heavy piece of round bar and a piece of pipe. I just welded the pipe to the round bar. And then, you know, you could use a hammerhead or something else, right? And then I got this three quarter minus aggregate. So I get the post up and st straight up and down, plumb and true and all the rest, that kind of stuff. And just, just barely touching the string line, like just barely. And that the face is completely flush, not cockeyed. So you'd have one corner touch and then the other side have a gap flush perfect flush as much as you possibly can and then get a bit of aggregate in the bottom of the hole with the post obviously already in it and and trued up and start tamping it down and I use a little bit of water here to help consolidate because this is fairly dry material for the most part just to help consolidate the aggregates a little bit more and then I'm just going around tamping it down going around tamping it down and that was another thing that was recommended by another fellow uh, was to instead of using cement because most posts fail at ground level because water pools in the cement so you know you could crown your concrete uh, but what happens often enough is um, then end up being little gaps at, at the interface of the concrete and the post and then water migrates in there and it sort of sits because it can't go anywhere and then that's where the posts end up rotting off and in this case hopefully and we'll see in some time down the road whether this selection was uh, a good one or not uh, one from if the posts stay up and down straight up and down over a heavy winter because we get some some pretty nasty winds here like you know we'll get like 80 90 kilometer an hour winds gusts and uh, so this, this fence is going to be under some strain, especially we're going to have solid six foot high fence here. So that's what I'm doing. Now, I'm sure I'll get a whole pile of comments saying that I'm a fucking idiot, but that's what's going on here. So I might cut in at some point, but basically uh, it's... So far, not rocket science. It's just using some simple tools, you know, um, uh, uh, shovel and uh, auger. You can rent from Home Depot or a post hole shovel like that. Um, you know, when you end up getting three feet deep, these are 10 foot tall posts, and you end up getting about three feet deep. Um, if you're hauling like a little spoonful of stuff up there, it sure fires up your shoulders in a fucking hurry 
with that uh, goon spoon. Um, so yeah, that's that. So uh, if this is helpful at all. Uh, if you got any other questions, I'll try to look at the comments every once in a while, but I usually never do. Um, so like, comment, subscribe, and uh, happy fencing. This has been going on for a while. It fucking sucked balls. Pardon my French. Um, take it forever to get all this in, especially in in between time and after work and all the rest of it. And um, anyways, that's how it goes. Uh, the joy of part-time farming, I guess. Suppose for me, anyways. Um, so that's it. Stop enough rambling. Have a good one. Cheers.